Hello everyone and welcome back to this video series on how to make an aircraft in Autodesk Fusion 360. So I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has been continuing their support with these video tutorials and I'm really amazed to see that so many of you are keeping on top of every new tutorial that comes out. So um, I also want to say a big thank you to everyone who's been liking, commenting and subscribing. It really helps out so if you haven't done that already um, and if you'd like to, that would really, really be appreciated. Okay, so let's get started onto the tutorial. So in the previous one, what we did was we focused on the fuselage details, and that meant working on the cockpit section, the windows, and also the doors. Okay, so in this tutorial, what we'll be doing is focusing on the details for the wing section. Now, if I turn my canvases back on, you'll see that at least in my uh, blueprints, I had a few details on the wings. So I believe these are the slats. We've got some flaps in the backside of the wings so on the trailing edge. We've also got some, um, we've got some air, air brakes, I think they're called. And we've also got some ailerons uh, incorporated in, in, in the design. We also have these three pointy uh, things sticking out of the wing. And I think these are called pylons or flap track beams and what they basically do is deploy the flaps during takeoff or landing or whenever the flaps need to be deployed. Now, if anything I said over here was wrong, please do not hesitate to correct me in the comments. I do not want to be spreading out misinformation. Okay, so when I say that we will be uh, modeling these parts, I mean we are probably just going to do them visually and actually making these parts move inside of Fusion 360 will be I'm a bit tricky to do uh, just just from a visual perspective. So um, if you guys want to uh, see how I would model these flaps and make them movable, etc., that will probably require a completely different video series altogether because that incorporates some of the engineering side of things rather than purely visual side of things. Um, if you're making this aircraft for RC purposes, I know some of you are, uh, what you can do is follow what I'm doing here as a fundamental and then you can make some changes yourself to then be able to make this an RC as well. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is activate the wing component. And the reason why I want to do this is, again, similar to why we did it in the fuselage in the last tutorial. Because every sketch or every extrusion, every split body we do, it's going to be stored under the wing component. So we don't have a problem with... Um, switching bodies from the main to the wing component again and again. In this case, it's just going to do everything in the wing component. And again, if it makes life a little bit easy, what I'm going to do is hide the fuselage, the horizontal and the vertical stabilizer. So all you can see now is just the wing section. Okay, so essentially what we'll, what we'll be doing is we'll be creating sketches that basically outline all the different um, control surfaces over here. And then we're gonna be using those to then split the wing body, similar to how we made the windows and the cockpit in the fuselage section. So sketching, splitting, sketching, splitting, sketching, splitting, something along those lines. Okay, so in this case, you can see that the blueprints actually have gotten a little bit um, lighter. And I think that's because the blueprints were stored in the main, uh, in the main folder, not in the wing section. Um, and therefore, what I can do is under the wing component, if I just hide my bodies, then I should be able to see these a little bit more clearer and then we can start sketching. So another point I want to make before we continue is if your blueprint does not have this many or this much detail, um, what you can do is choose another blueprint just for the top section, import it and calibrate it the same way we did in the beginning of this tutorial series. And that way you should get um, a wing section that has a little bit of detail. Now, in my case, my blueprint is quite detailed, but I'm not going to be going into this this much detail uh, in this tutorial anyways. So the first thing I've done here is I've just, I've, I've hit the bodies so I can see the fuselage a little bit clearer. And then I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to create a sketch on the top plane. And I'm just going to align it like this. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw a line from here to here and from here to here. Okay, and what this is going to do is it's just sort of modeled that section over there. So that one over there. Okay, I'm going to bring back the bodies to make sure if anything needs to be extended or removed. So in this case, you can see that if I, uh, if I'm going to be using this, these lines as a splitting tool, you can see it can cause a problem 
if this sort of extends in that direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extend it in the other direction a little bit. So that's got a bit of space over there between the straight line and that angular line over there. Similarly over here, you can see that our wing actually goes all the way to the right plane. So I can extend this line all the way there and I, yep, and I'm just making sure that it's still horizontal. That would be amazing. Okay, so that's the first one done. Another one that I can do is from here to here, to here, to here. Okay, and I think that's going to be um, an air, air brake, I believe. Um, yep, okay. And then I'm going to create another surface from here to here, and just following that over there. And you can see that they actually aligned up um, quite perfectly over there, but I can see how this can cause a problem later on. So I'm just going to move, okay, so if I move this, you can see that it's sort of joined it to the previous sketch we made. So I'm just going to undo here. And I'm going to drag this a little bit to the left and then draw one over there. So now this vertical line is a bit on the left side of that angular bit and this one is on the right. So there should be no problems when we're trying to split the body. Okay, I'm going to do another one from here to here and then from here to here. And it's okay if you leave these ones, uh, these sort of blue lines extending out of the wing because they're just going to be used as a knife so they shouldn't cause you any problems. Now another thing we can notice here is that in the slats these are sort of at an angle as well instead of being instead of being vertical they're actually at an angle and so we want to take that into account and what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to go from there all the way to that straight line I think somewhere to here and then to here and then I'm going to start drawing the 90 degree lines so from here to here you can set, you can see that it's a 90 degree angle there and again again in my case my wing tip is different from my main wing so I can see that if I use this as a splitting tool and I try to split this body it can make it look a little bit funny similar to what happened in the no section of the fuselage the first time we did it. So I'm just going to move the sketch a little bit to the right. Okay, and then I'm going to repeat the process for this one and also for this one and from here to here and I think that's it. Okay, so if I hide my wing body now, you can see that these are basically all the knives or all the cutting tools that we need in order to split this wing up. Now remember, fusion is a little bit funny that when it, um, when it splits a body, it takes on different names. So let's see what fusion will do here first. So I'm going to finish the sketch and similar to what we did in the fuselage, so we're going to say split body and I'm going to click this one as my splitting body. And the splitting tool is going to be that line over there. So if you click on extend splitting tool, you'll see that what it's doing is it's basically extended that line all the way till there. And it's extended this line all the way till there. And in our case, we already took into account, um, we, we basically covered the entire body that we wanted to split with this knife. So in this case, it doesn't make much of a difference. So if you press OK, you'll see that it has created this new body over here. And again, Fusion is funny, so what it's done here is, is this new um, this new flap is basically um, now named wing main, and our actually and our actual wing main is now named wing main one. Again, we're going to deal with this bit in a bit, so nothing to worry about right now. Okay, so I'm going to bring back my sketch again. I'm going to split body this one, and the splitting tool I'm going to use is this one. So if I press OK. And if I hide the sketch now, you'll see that this has also created another um, split. Okay, again, so I'm going to split this one, and how I want to split it is using this one. Okay, again, hide the sketch to make sure everything was split fine, and you should be good. Okay, bring back the sketch, split body, which is this one, splitting tool is this one, and press OK. So again, hide the sketch, make sure everything is good, awesome. Okay, then I'm going to split the body, this one, and the splitting tool is going to be this one. 
And what it's done here is it's, it's identified that that is the leftmost edge of my, of my cutting tool, and it's followed the path all the way there. And again, because my extended splitting tool is ticked, it's basically extended, extended the rightmost part all the way so that it covers the entire body. But if I untick this, you'll see that that line disappears. But we want that line there, so I'm going to click Extend Splitting Tool, and I'm going to press OK. Again, hide the sketch to make sure everything is good, and it is. Um, okay, so now we've also got these little segments over here. So what I'm going to do is split body and I'm going to select this one instead. And the splitting tool is going to be this one. And let's see what happens if I select multiple splitting tools in this case and I press OK. I think it did the job, so in this case there was no problem. Cool, so now we have these different surfaces. Okay, so at this point we have got um, our main wing body, which I've just renamed over here. And then we've also got our wing tip, so number two. Then we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I believe ten bodies. So we've got ten bodies here. And um, what you can do at this point is apply some appearances if you want. Or um, you can skip this part and go straight to the pylons. So I am going to apply my appearances here. And you'll see in general, uh, when it comes to aircraft wings, they usually have a bit of gray on the top, regardless of what color aircraft it is. So in this A350 that I made uh, for the time lapse last year, you can see that the main sort of section here was a bit gray, while the rest of it followed a white sort of, um, a, a white appearance similar to the fuselage. So what I'm going to do is this wing main, I'm going to add an appearance and I'm going to go to paint, um, glossy, and I'm going to try adding a gray over here. Um, and for the rest of them, I am going to apply a white appearance. So appearance, and this is the white we used last time. So I'm just going to drag that on there and you can see that this is what it's created. Um, for the wing tip, I'm going to um, either make it white, or in this case, actually, I'm going to go ahead and make it blue, because I like my aircraft to have a bit of blue involved. And so that's that. And now if we go to render, you'll see that in the right conditions, you can actually see the difference between the different control surfaces. So even though this body, this body, and this body are basically flushed together, what Fusion has done is it's recognized that these are now different bodies and it's added this sort of border onto them that you can see over here. Pretty cool in my opinion. If you want this to be a bit more prominent, what you could do is similar to what we did in the fuse in the fuse slot section for the with the cockpit. We added rims. We added rims around the cockpit and applied a different appearance to it. And that way what happened was you could see the difference between the fuselage, the rims, and the actual cockpit. And I think it looks pretty cool that way. So if that's something you want to go ahead and do, you can do that now. Awesome. So coming back to our design workspace, and I'm just making sure this is out of the graphic. Awesome. Cool. So the next thing we're going to work on are these sort of pods, pylons, flap track beams, whatever you want to call them. Now, what they basically do is they extend the flaps out of the wing during takeoff and landing, or whenever flaps need to be deployed, basically. Again, I'm just going to hide the fuselage here. Um, I'm going to activate activate the wing component. And actually, under I'm going to right-click on the wing component, and I'm going to create a new com component inside that, and I'm going to call it um, FTB, and it's called Flap Track Beams. You can call it Pod, Pylon, whatever you want. And this way, what we've basically done is uh, inside the wing component, we've activated a new flap track beam component. And so if I just hide this for now, you can see that they've got a very interesting shape. And inside this is going to be a, a, the mechanism that basically deploys the flaps. But the outside bit is basically just a fairing because um, to make it a bit more aerodynamic, we've added these aerodynamic fairings. Um, to make sure that the air is moving smoothly over these surfaces. So that's the front view and from the and from the front Sorry, that was a side view and from the front. It basically just looks like a, a rectangle. So nothing big happening there and from the top we have these sort of pointy looking things there. So let's start modeling them. Okay, so 
I'm just going to bring back the wing section here, but I'm going to hide the bodies. And the reason is because our flap track beam component is actually inside the wing component. So we want the wing component to be visible, but we can hide the wing main bodies. Okay, um, the, first time I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to construct a new plane uh, that is parallel to the plane on the right. And I'm going to drag this plane out all the way till somewhere there. Okay, so what we're aiming to do is have this plane um, in the middle of one of the flap track beams. So I'm taking the one that is uh, on the most far right and just adding it somewhere there. Okay, I'm going to press OK here. And then I'm going to go back to the right plane. And I'm going to create a sketch on this new plane that we've just created. And what we can do now uh, are a couple of things. You can either bring back the body and project whatever intersects with this plane, or I'm just going to do it a little bit more um, roughly and then uh, manually edit it so that it looks like it's in the correct place. So I'm just going to create some splines here. So control point spline. I'm going to follow this curve first. And then I'm going to follow this curve there. I'm also going to follow this one here. And maybe add a little bit of curvature here. And then I can just go ahead and close this off by putting that one there. OK, I'm going to press T on my keyboard to trim. So I'm going to trim this, this and this and even this one here, and that one there, okay? Um, now this section over here, the one that I've just highlighted, is going to be under the wing, so it won't be very visible, so it doesn't matter much as to what's going on there. Okay, so we've come up with the most basic shape here. I think there's a small extension here. I'm just going to trim that out as well. And I'm going to finish the sketch here. Okay, so we've got a very rough sketch, and this sketch is basically in the middle of one of my um, flapjack beams. So I'm going to press E to extrude, and I'm going to say direction is symmetric. I'm going to go to my front view. I'm just going to drag this out till there. Okay, and I'm going to press OK. Now obviously, this is some like a floating blob in space, but we're going to edit this slightly so that it looks a little bit more decent. Um, again, from the top view, if you have a look, um, we can actually move this a little bit to the right. Uh, a little bit top from this angle. So instead of saying minus 100, maybe I want to say minus 50. Okay, maybe 75. Okay, 50 was better. Okay, and you can see that um, from the top view, it, it, it's going to actually point out like a cone. So if I create a new sketch um, on the top plane, again, it doesn't matter, and just capture that position as well. It doesn't matter what height it is at right now, because again, the sketch is just going to be projected upwards and it's going to use that as a knife. So spline, control point spline, and I'm just going to do something like this. And if I press P and uh, select bodies as my filter, and I'm going to click on this body, press OK, I'm going to draw a line from, so if you go on the most rightmost edge here, you'll see that it's giving me this triangle uh, thing. And what that triangle indicates is that is that it's that it's that point is the middle of that line. So I'm just going to draw a random line towards the left to make sure that that's my line of symmetry. I'm going to click on the mirror tool and the object I want to select is this one. Mirror line is this one. And there we go. I'm just going to trim that out there. OK, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm basically going to be using this as a tool to then cut out the uh, section of the fuse uh, of this pylon. So split body, this one, and the splitting tool I'm going to select is this. Now let's see what happens if I select both of them at the same time and I press OK. OK, it did the job. Now, in case that doesn't work, you can just repeat the process twice. It's no big deal there. OK, so under bodies, then body one and body, body one and body three are the ones we don't need. So I'm just going to right click and press remove. And here we have our very, very rough pylon ready. So again, from the top, I'm just going to add a little bit of fillet on that edge there, and also on that edge there. I'm just going to drag it in a little bit so that it's a bit more streamlined than what it was before. 
4. Again, I'm going to press OK. And then coming to the right view again, I'm going to add a small fillet over there. Okay, so it's not letting me do anything there for some reason. Okay, but definitely need a fillet here. And that's good. Okay, so now let's bring back the main wing body and see how we're doing on that front. So if I just click here so that I can orbit around, you'll see that currently our pylon is basically above our flap, which is not a great thing. We want this to be below it as much as possible. So what you can do at this point is just manually move the flap track beam down. So just move it down a little bit. And you'll see that um, if I press OK here, it's still coming out a little bit from that side. So if I just move this, press M, and again, just move this down a little bit. And now it's too far away. So what we can do is instead of saying minus 100, maybe we can try minus 50. I think that looks much better. Okay. And one more thing we can actually do here is add a fillet to this side, this side, this side, and this side, just to make it a little bit more smoother and press OK. And now if I go back home, and I think that looks better. So just to make sure that things look good, even in perspective, is that if you go back to render and you'll see that this now looks really neat. Okay, I'm just going to capture this position because this is the place we want this pylon to be in. And in FTV, I'm just going to press copy and I'm going to paste this uh, in the wing section, but paste new. So the new body that I'll create will be completely independent of the previous one. So paste new and we want to place it on the left side a little bit. So somewhere over there and a bit down below there. Okay, and just making sure again, so if I go to the back side, again, it's a bit high, so what we can do is just move this a little bit down. Something like that looks good to me. And now we're going to click on that one to capture position, go to render and make sure everything looks good. And it does. So again, make sure from the top as well. Um, so you can see over here that actually from the top, it looks like it's poking out a little bit too much. So what I can do here is actually move this a little bit to the front. So press M there, and I'm going to move this a little bit to the front until it reaches that point there. And again, if you just click on capture position, it should do the trick. Yep, that looks even better. Awesome. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just applied a wide appearance to both my flap track beams. A um, couple of points to note here is that this is only one of the ways to make this pylon or flap track beam or whatever you want to call it. Um, alternatively, you could have also used the T-spline way of modeling it. If that's something that you want to try out, go ahead and do so. And if you do succeed, please do leave it in the comments. It'll be really nice to see um, if you tried this out a different way. Um, personally, I don't mind the look of these pylons. They are the ones that come with the 737. However, if you want to change the way yours look, you can go ahead and modify these, or you could try a different configuration. So in, in this A350, I think I made it to look more like a triangle than a rectangle. So if that's something that you want to try and do, go ahead and do that as well. Okay. Um, so if we bring back the fuselage, the horizontal and the vertical stabilizer, and I activate the entire file there, you'll see that this looks really cool. So if I go to the cube, right click and click on perspective, I really like the feel of this so far. It looks really cool. And it looks like a 737 in my opinion. Um, and obviously we'll be making some more changes in the future. And so the next video is going to be about adding the same details to our horizontal and vertical stabilizer. So as a challenge, what you could do is try and uh, model the control surfaces of the uh, vertical and horizontal tail uh, before the next video comes out. And if you were able to do so, do leave it in the comments below. It'd be really nice to see if you were able to apply the same techniques that we used on the wing to our empanade section as well. Um, if you guys are modeling uh, your aircraft using my methods, uh, it'll be really nice to see what you guys are doing. So 
if you have Instagram, for example, you can uh, send some pictures there to me. Um, my, um, my Instagram will be listed in the description below. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, so obviously the next one is going to be on the details of the horizontal and vertical stabilizer. Well, the, the one after that can be on the engines. And then we're also going to be focusing on the bulkhead. I think that's what it's called. I'm not completely sure. Do correct me if I'm wrong. But that's basically where the uh, fuselage is attached to the wing. So it's this section over here that you can follow my mouse here. So it's that one there. Okay, and uh, that's it for now. And um, if you have any problems, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Chances are, if you have a problem, someone else has a problem as well, and then we can fix it together. Okay, thank you guys for watching. Uh, again, these files will be on the website if you want them, and I will see you in the next tutorial.